Hello, friends. This is Larry. I'm coming to you from the Portland Roadshow Show again. And my guest right now is John D. Agostino. Nice to meet you, John. Nice to meet you, too. How are we Larry. doing? Are we having a good show? <laughs> One of the best ever. What do you think about this year, and how often have you been to Portland? Actually, I started back in the 80s, going to Portland uh, probably five or six times through the 80s. Then in the 90s, I, I started doing another five or six. Probably about 15, 16 times I've been to the Portland show. And this one compared to the, everybody, every other one? Hands down, the record-breaking year. So we're no, saying... Nothing will touch this. Yeah. The best in 60 years. And I've been going the last six years in a row. That's saying something. I mean, it, it, I'm asking that question of all of us because that was our perception coming into this. We came in and said, this is the best we've ever seen. I wonder if that's really what other people are thinking. What, to hear you guys all say the same thing, it lets us know it is as big as we think. I've had so many spectators yesterday come to me when I was signing autographs saying that they come here for years and years and years. And I'm telling you, they're very impressed with the show. Excuse we, me? I, I, hey. <laughs> who do we got here? <laughs> Penny Pachette, West Coast Customs promoter. George Barris, years and years ago, labeled her as the queen of custom. So, not only in America, but around the world. And I'm, it's, God, it's nice to see you, Penny. Thank you, thank the, you. The queen of customs. The, Hi, I'm Larry Queen. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Penny Bichette. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you, thank you. That was really special when George labeled oh, yeah. me that. Were you, were you uh, here or around here then when George was here a couple years ago? No. Yeah. This is only my second year at this show. Second year, she picked a good year to Last, come, didn't best, she? The best year. Yeah. What do you and what do you think of what you're seeing here? Oh, it's great. It's great. It, this, I'll be back again next year. Uh -huh, that's She's she'll be time. here every year. Do you do you see something that you have a favorite? Because we're we're having a hard time trying to pick. Even just us saying we think this one's the one. It's it's pretty tough. It is really yeah. tough. You have a a top few that you kind of like the looks of and. Being a custom person, yeah. she's, she's partial to custom. Yeah. yeah. Definitely partial Definitely. to custom. Partial it's, to custom. No, it's really a tough, it's a tough call. I'm glad I I'm would, not a judge. I would, what's that? I'm glad I'm not a judge. Oh, us too. I would it's not want to put my, I wouldn't want to have to put a note on that they get to read later. You know and what? It's Even like, in I my own know. show, I don't get involved in judging. I need to leave it to people that really know the business. Yeah. Because what my eye sees, judges don't always see either. Mm -hmm. You know, with me, it's... I, I think people in this show ha have learned that you you better clean all the little places that you don't think of. And, and knowing that, if it comes down to everything's clean, everything's presented right, now you just got to pick it based on what it is. Good luck. What do you like? What's your favorite color? I don't know how you pick. <laughs> your favorite Sometimes color. Sometimes it's a coin yeah. color. They're, doesn't always they're, work. It's so close. Yeah. It's like a needle in a, in a haystack. They're yeah. so close that they're all winners, really. Yeah. You know? no. Uh, how, how have you got into all three halls then, or have you? A lot of people just walk into the door and they have a hard time getting past the first yeah, actually, few we're rows. Four this year. The yeah, year, they are. They're good four. Yeah. yeah. They're all over. But yeah. I tell you, this has been a record-breaking year. Broke the record on Friday. Shattered the record yesterday. Chip Foose got here at three o'clock in the afternoon. Start signing. He never stopped. Nine o'clock, the show ended. Not for Foose. Stop. Didn't stop till twelve fifteen that night. So he stay. He worked all those hours, nine over nine hours. He's such a gentleman. Yes, he's a great and guy. I don't remember seeing him take a break either. I thought he was there, straight right? signing. Wow. I I heard we had had people. We kept sending people over saying, uh, "Is there a shot?" And it was like, "No way." And and we didn't want to barge in and say, "Hey, we want you for an interview," and then take away. People have waited no, in lines and that. I mean, and we would have killed. anyway. Yeah. yeah. He would have gotten killed. Yeah. It was yeah, but one it, woman that kind of went. Ooh. Yeah, it would have been. He's so good at what he does. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. If you're standing in line for hours and it's nine o'clock, the show's ending. He will tell the promoter, "I'll stay till the end." So you see the end over there. When that's when he comes to the line, the show is ended for me. That's so, amazing. And no show that I know of have stayed over for three hours with people waiting for autographs. No show in history. And I travel the world. And Penny knows that. I'm telling this was very special year what Chip did. And wow. I'm telling you, very special year with having Gene Winfield here, Dave Kindig, Kev Dog. I mean, this is the record-breaking year. I don't know how we're ever gonna beat it. And it I'm glad Penny's with us. Chip takes his time with every single person. And that's yeah. good to yeah. a fault. Yeah. To a fault. Yeah. yeah he. I mean, did you get to see him towards the end of the night too? Yeah, he was he was like he looked a lot he looked pretty tired. I, I mean you could tell. We did a photo we session did with everybody at nine thirty. 
And uh, so I figure he went for another th almost three hours more after I left. I was beat yesterday when I went home, were you? No, not at all. <laughs> you were pumped not from it? Or? Not at all. We, I was, actually, I went to bed at 4 o'clock in the morning. The, the, Sean doesn't ever get tired. Well, you, you said, see me in front of a camera, oh my God. Actually, I'm about a, I'm about a four to five hour sleeper. More than that, I'm droggy. Yeah, well, that's what I got yeah. last night. We got, yeah, I, I think, 2 o'clock in the morning is when we went to bed. And the same thing, it was talking all the way up to that about this and yeah. what's going on. I've never seen it like it. It's, it makes you feel special just to be here while it's going on. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're coming back? Yeah, yes, she is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's coming back. It makes me want to see what next with, year will she'll be. She'll be with me in the booth, definitely. There you go. Oh, really? oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're going to have your side, and I'll have my side. How's that? Okay, But John. then we'll get together. <laughs> and then we'll go out to Beach's Restaurant and have a nice little dinner, right? Then we'll come back for the show again. So three big days next year, so rest up, starting now. I, I, I almost get the impression you're giving me orders. <laughs> I don't think so. I know. So. You, you got to watch. I'm telling you, and nobody then, takes over Patty. Nobody. I don't think she, she sells could. it like it is, but one thing about it, everybody loves her. Not only around here, just America, but when I travel the world and people talk about Paso Robles for 27 years. Six. Okay, 26 years. Sorry. And now Santa Maria, they always mention, I want to go to the West Coast Custom Cruise and Nationals. Everybody around the world, and they know of Pachette. Rick Pichette, her husband, who passed away five, six years ago. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah, he was very special. What's, very special. Yeah. What's the date then this year? It's Memorial Weekend. Memorial May Weekend. May 27, 28, 29 in Santa Maria. That's halfway between L.A. and the Bay Area. Yeah, oh, so good, for, like good for us, right good on for the L.A. Coast. And the right weather, the weather should freeway. be beautiful that time of year. Temperature is pretty it's good. It's usually pretty good. Yeah, yeah, we got a few rain, a little bit, but it's been pretty good. Not in Santa Maria. But I will tell you one thing. I at first, Paso Robles, I figured nothing ever touch it, which I still love Paso Robles. I call it the first half of the West Coast Cups. Now we're in the second half because we went 26 years. But the Santa Maria Inn. I just love that place now. I just, it's just, it's an old historic. You still not a free room, so stop. No, no, I don't, no, no, no. Well, you gave me a free room when I was in the Hall of Fame last when, year. Only when you go That's in the Hall right. of Fame. That's right. It's okay. It doesn't matter. I'll be there. It doesn't matter at all. You've, I love you it. You haven't missed since you started. No, nope. And neither did all George until he stopped. I know. We miss King George. He's going to be the big. We miss King George. Big all boy in our show. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That was, I was blessed to have come my brother happened to be showing a car that here that year and and right beside him so i was able to go over and meet him and boy he seemed nice i it, yeah. it made you actually feel even just meeting him that i missed out because if he had been here before i would have been yeah. able to see him visit yeah. that's this venue for us one of the best things about it is we get to talk to people that we, a lot of people wouldn't have that opportunity and it's nice yeah. to get to know people so. yeah we, we all miss george the world yeah. misses george yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just uh, he was here in 2013 he was definitely coming this year. He was on the car to come this year, and uh, we were at SEMA. It was November 5th. I got the I got the word at one o'clock. I was signing autographs with the Sonex of Germany company, car care company, and I stopped. I broke down. I, I walked away. Danny Coker from Counts Custom. Uh -huh. He got the word a few minutes after. He left. Uh, and then then and Barry McGuire. We had. And then you heard. And then I, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I it was. Some, is it true? Is it true? It's like unbelievable. And then we had to do an interview at four o'clock with Barry McGuire for Car Crazy. We had the empty seat for George. We had Barry, me, Linda Vaughn, and Gene Winfield. And we did a half hour special all, all for George. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Never be forgotten. He, yeah. he will always be the so king of the customer. So that had just happened, and you guys actually. Changed the format of it and just said, "This is what we're talking about." Yeah. Well, you were all feeling it. You couldn't have really done it any other way, anyway. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, the king of the customizers is gone, but he'll never be forgotten. Yeah, and we and he will always be the king. Yes. We we're going to go celebrate his 90th birthday. That's right. Yeah, yeah the daughter and, and fam close friends and family. We we're going on a, a four-day cruise down mm -hmm. to Mexico mm -hmm. to celebrate his 90th birthday. Yeah. And uh, he died two weeks before. That's right. So Joji said, we're still going to do this. We're... So we had a birthday cake for George, and we had an empty chair for him, and we celebrated his yeah. life. Yeah. It, it would have awesome. been something to have seen him, and I just finished with Gene. It would have been neat to have seen the two of them together, just to yeah. see them interact, because yeah. larger than life. I mean, they, they don't call people like that legends for yeah. no reason. I tell you, George Barris... In all my years, I, I, I've seen a lot of the customizers, great customizers, but when it comes to promotions, 
He was the promoter. Nobody, oh nobody will ever beat George Barris. I don't mm. even think when we're gone, Customs his name is, is, right will now. be, no, not at all. No. He, 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 really he knew how to organize. He knew how to promote. He knew how to, don't think he was, he was a builder too. Right. He, he could work lead. He could, he could paint. He could, he, he could do it all. He was one of the best painters in his day in yes, the beginning. Yes, yes. Mm. But, you know, when you started doing a lot of promoting, you could either do one or the other. Like me, I call myself more of a promoter, a restyler than a builder because I'm so busy traveling the world trying to promote cars and promote customs. But I still do some work on my cars, but I have a good team of people. Mm. Like Oz Customs out of Orville, mm -hmm. Gene Winfield, Daryl Hollenbeck, uh, John Aiello. Uh, Is it I've Richie working for you this Richie, year? Richie, no, not yet, but I'm going to get Richie to do something. Richie Ballas over in Los Angeles, right Burbank. Right yeah, Richie's the one that painted George's casket. Yeah, yeah so Richie. Outstanding job. Mm. Mm. Unique twist. I didn't uh, see that, shot. but it. How could it have been any any different? It, it like would have had to been beautiful. Line gold. It was beautiful, and it had. Uh, and that, that was his. Color. That was his color thing, anyway, wasn't it? He had that. Uh, he always had that that bright yellow. He loved the yellow. Yeah, right, right there. Yeah, right there. there it is. Yeah. 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 When I'd met him, that's what he yeah. was wearing. Right. Yeah. yeah. He always liked to be known as George, and you always know George because of his of his appearance and his coats. But this is. Oh yeah. yeah that's, a, that's very. This is what all the close friends. Not many people. Not those. Yes, I've heard bears, that. Paul bears. Yeah. Oh wow. And, that and is you were great. sitting in front next to Joji. I was. I was yeah. very honored. To be asked front to row. Sit right next to the family, with the family. Wow. And I was on the so second I, row, and, and yeah, she was on the left side of me. Yep, look at that. Barris Custom. Wow. That's, I, I, I bet you precious. keep it tight with you, don't I'm you? Privileged to, yeah. To have that. To have yeah. To wear that. There were so few people that really got one. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So, like I said, he's gone, but he'll never be forgotten. I mean, I have so many photos. I mean, thousands of photos in all later. these years. Penny, thank, thank you so much for coming you. by. Thanks for coming. Nice to meet you. Bye. Well, that was fun. Yeah, Scoot that, that was cool. I cannot believe that. She just comes popping. You are connected, are you not, Mr. D'Agostino? Uh, well, I knew she was here, <laughs> but she kind of surprised me to come to the interview. That is something. I mean, I mean she's, she likes to talk. She likes to do interviews, but... To come, you know, I told her I'm going to do an interview, and and I says I would like you to go there. She says, nope, I'm, I don't want to talk. Mm -hmm. I says you have to be there. Mm. But she kind of surprised me, but she did show up, and she can have her own talk show. That is, something. she's great at what she does. Now you are larger than life, and way more than what than what I was expecting. Um, you come across so confident, and I bet that comes from being in the industry this long, being plugged in, being comfortable with feeling like. It's family everywhere you go. That's what it, it feels it like. It is. And, you know, growing up, uh, you know, building the model cars when I was at a young age and then going to the car shows when I was nine years old, the Oakland Roaster Show, and then building my first car when I was 16 and watching people like Barris, Balon, Winfield, Starbird, Cushenberry, De Rosa, which is from my hometown, have these cars. So Pittsburgh, where I was brought up in California, that was the hotbed for custom cars. Mm -hmm in the East Bay. It's about 50 miles from San Francisco. That was the place where you go to see the best custom cars mm. by the best builders. So, you know, after you see this for many years, I knew when I was 16, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start my career building cars. Now it's been uh, 45 years. At 16 when you started? 16. Because I, I still start. remember being, that would have been right around the time I was finishing with modeling and I was a model nut too. Oh. Every Christmas, every birthday, what do you want? It was models. What about grandma and grandpa? Models. I could never get too many. I wanted stacks of them, and that's all I did. Yeah. Model cars. The, uh, and then back then, you Did know, you mix them up, too? I put wheels on oh the yeah. different wheels oh and yeah. slam oh yeah. them. And oh, yeah. Got to make them unique. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, different tires, different wheels, different grills, different headlights, yeah. chopping the tops. Yeah. All, all the imagination and the hours that we paints, would spend. The custom yeah. candies, the pearls. Yeah, I, I think it's the foundation for everything that kind of the rest of our lives, we do that with those models. and. Yeah. It just transitions to cars yeah. instantly. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? Once I started with the models and I start building the cars, I never went back to the models. Yeah, no, that's it's never kind of my deal, model. too. After, and I got rid 16. of them, and I shouldn't have. You think of no. all the models we had and how rare they would have been, and I remember that was a day it was like, ah, I don't do models anymore, and I got rid of all of them at one time. You did. I did. I, I kept should everything. have kept them. I kept oh. everything. Everything that I built back from, you know, eight years old even to now, oh. all the plaques, all the trophies, all the cars, all the magazines, I have everything. Everything stacked away, literally 
hundreds and hundreds of boxes. So, but, but boxes. See, that's the point, is that we used to display them. Well, and so you'd run out of room, and you kept trying to rotate them in like I you know. would your everything. I know. I know. And then, and then it would come off, and then it would go in a box and yeah. sit. And that's kind of what got me started of getting rid of them was, oh, they've been I in know. boxes you for so long. You can only display so much in a room. Yeah. You'd have to have a 10,000 square foot place to put all this stuff, and then you can, it goes on and on. And then you get married, and your wife says, yeah. she says, models? We're not putting models in my bedroom. It's yeah. like, where else would you put them? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the garage. I didn't think that quick. It was like, yeah, we got a garage. Let's yeah, put there. But, but still, you need, you need a nice showroom. You yeah. need yeah. a room in the house yeah. and put the best of the best in that room. Yeah. That's what I have now. Yeah, so. I was I was too cheap back in the day. I didn't have any money, so yeah. no extra room for that. It was the bedroom, the garage, or the living room. Oh, yeah. I wasn't going in the living room. wasn't so going in the So you didn't have an actual trophy room. Didn't have a trophy room. It would have, like I said, those were always yeah. bedroom yeah. when you're a guy. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. This yeah. last house that I was in, it was funny. I had, actually, it was a pretty big house, almost 5,000 square foot, but I had three extra rooms to put stuff in, so I made three different trophy rooms, oh, and it was great. Nice. Now I moved to this other house, which is smaller, but nicer. It's on the water. It's on the country club golf course area. I'm dedicated just to one room. So that one room is so packed. You take a picture in there. I mean, you have all the small trophies on bookcases. You have pictures on the walls. You got stuff on the floor. I have my desk and I have my computer, just enough to get in there. I got bearer stuff hanging all over. I go to work there, and you know what? I'm still, I'm happy. Because even though it's small, but it's so comfortable. Oh, and it, and, it, and it's, it's, a car, it's the feel of just a car feel. I, yeah, I mean, for me, trophies are different than models. I keep all my trophies just because... We have all the memories. Every time you look at a trophy, right, yeah. you remember the whole yeah. event. You know exactly. It's so what vivid. Car, Isn't I, it weird how I that works? What car, what year, yeah. uh, what, who was there, what celebrities were there. Yeah, the, yeah from way back. What, do you remember the first time you won something, that feeling? And, and do you remember what, it, what the vehicle was yeah, when, you, when exactly. you got your first win? Yeah, it was what? 1967. It was a 56 Chevy Bel Air. Two-door hardtop. Built by Frank D. Rose at Customs of Pittsburgh, okay. and it was lowered. It had it had chrome wheels on it. Uh, it was all molded. Uh, it was Royal Trident purple and pearl white, Ooh. and it was just a cool car. Not mm -hmm. a radical car, but really nice. Uh -huh. All white tech and roll. Took it to a local show, won first place. Took it to San Francisco show, won first place. Took it to Oakland and won. And then after after a few years, I sold it. Then I got into the new cars. Brand new Rivieras, brand new Grand Prix, brand new uh, Lincolns, all luxury cars. Then I start mixing it up. New car, old car, new car, old car. Mm -hmm. And we're talking the early 70s. Mm -hmm. From like 71 all the way through the 70s was new, old, new, old. I love that kind of passion. And, you know, that, that we do want to stay connected. I mean, you want to stay connected because of the classics, but we can't turn our back on new stuff new no. stuff comes yeah. out we look no. at it we love it yeah and the, and your mind instantly always goes back to that this is what the factory did but yeah i bet i could do something a little cooler yeah, if but i you did gotta this. remember back in say 1951 what was one of the most famous barris cars ever in history i'm only i'm thinking right with batman but i'm not thinking that it's that it's, the it's older than that. Merc. the oh. matranga merc was 1940 built in when was the monster mobile though oh the monster mobile was basically uh that was in the 60s. Was it? Was it 60s? See, I guess I I'm not. Say, I would say I'm not that in tune. I remember I mean, early 60s. Well, how old say. are you, first off? Me, 63. Okay, so you're okay. 10 years difference. But, that explains some of that. that yeah, you would know but you know, those older. are the movie cars, and I know yeah. a little bit about that. The Batmobile, the Monkey Mobile, uh, but mine, when it comes to the custom cars from Barris, mm -hmm. probably the first really radical custom car that made a huge scene mm -hmm. was the Matranga Merc. Mm -hmm. 1940 Mercury chopped with the curved side windows. Uh -huh. I built one back in the mid 80s. Very similar, but I gave it a little D'Agostino touch. Mm -hmm. And uh, same top treatment with the curved chrome windows, like I did Sophia a few years ago. Uh, that was one of his famous cars, but the one that was brand new at the time, and it was a new car, customized, was the Hirahata Merc. 1951 Mercury, same style. Had the curved side channeling a little right. bit, very low, two-tone green, the darker green, the lighter green. I mean, green. do we even know anybody doing anything like that? Because as far as I know, he's the guy who started that whole kind of look. Oh, yeah. That people went after. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's been copied so much around the world, mm -hmm. that, that Hirohata look or the Matranga look. Mm -hmm. You get rid of the, the, the B-pillar, mm -hmm. and you make it into a hard top, but then you make that chrome channeling. And yeah. the trick about that chrome channeling, and I've seen a lot of people misuse it, 
they actually get that quarter window and they just lean it very little. They peak it very little. You don't get that good flow off the top. If you look at Matrangamurk and the Hirohata, it's peaked very heavy where the peak of that quarter goes way into the glass of the of the door glass. Mm -hmm. Then you bring your other glass into it. So when they meet up, they got a beautiful, beautiful silhouette. So you see it from your A to the B to the C pillar, absolutely astounding. And then bear a start of that. And that's what I actually I was gonna say you've done I was gonna say you've done something like that. And you've mastered that look, too. I mean, you, you got Well, the 40 Merc Stardust had that look, and the new Sophia car from a couple years ago, uh -huh. the one that just sold at Barry Jackson, that had that Mentranga, Hirohata look. They were both done very proper. Oz Customs built both those cars, or one of those cars, mm -hmm. the Sophia. Mm -hmm. And the other car was built by Bill Reisner of Classic Auto Body, mm -hmm. the 40 Merc. And that was back in the mid-'80s. Mm -hmm. And then Nick Mentranga, of all people, that had the, the, the 40 Merc, Flew in purposely in 1987 at the Grand National Road Show in Oakland to see that Merc of mine. Mm -hmm. And when he went to see it, he looked at the car, he started crying. He says, it reminds me so much of my car, but he said, John, you went a step above. With a few things you've done with the running boards all molded in, the color, you went to a black cherry. Mine was a little more dark, but it was very reminiscent, but it had a little, little touch. How does that feel when somebody like oh, that says so, something to you like that? It was so cool. Yeah. So touching. It, does it ever get old? I mean, it's it's one of them deals. You're hearing it constantly over and over and over again on projects. And it's, I don't know, I, I wonder... If these styles, if they're gonna, if they're gonna stay, because we want them to, but you know that these builders were all in a different era, and, they, and the new styles are changing. They will stay, but it's hopefully guys like me, hopefully that travel the world. I do a lot of world tours. You have to be out there. You gotta promote these custom cars. You got, I give the awards out all over the world to custom de elegance or award of excellence to a custom. But we we need. It's not just me. There's guys like Rick Dore. He's doing good promoting the custom cars. Richard Zoki from my area, which is about 10 years older than me. I learned a lot from Richard because he used to have most of his cars built by Gene Winfield back in the 60s, mm -hmm. the early 60s, all through the 70s. So I learned a lot from Richard, but we need to keep more people getting involved in. That's why when I do these shows around the world, I give two different awards out. Not only do I give a custom de elegance award, but I give a styling car the award to a non-American car. What I'm trying to do, and I've done it pretty successful in the last four or five years, is these people that are building these styling cars, when I first started going to, to, to Germany about four or five years ago, there was very few American cars in the show. Three or four or five. Now in four or five years, we get two to three to four hundred American cars. I've been promoting the Custom de Elegance Award there. So when you go there with a custom car, you, you qualify, you know, if it's chop channel section, to win the de Elegance Award. So we're starting to get a lot more cars in Europe, Switzerland, Norway, Germany, Estonia, borders Russia. I do shows there. So you get them, and I was going to say, you don't just get those kind of cars in your American type shows. You, you are heading out and going all over the world doing these shows. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just getting, I'm getting ready to leave. Actually, I leave uh, April 5th to go to my first show in Germany. I do four years just in Germany mm -hmm. and it's called Techno Classica. Mm -hmm. It is more it's more to the uh, to the exotic cars, it's more to the classic cars. Mm -hmm. But now since in the last four or five years we get a whole building full like this of just American cars. Mm -hmm. It's the American car room. Oh, and that's man. where I go to give my one award. And then I go in the, uh, one of the other rooms. They call them tuning cars, but I call them styling cars. And I call it the John D'Agostino Styling Car of the Year. So I give that award to, to one of those cars. And there are a lot of really good cars there, too. Oh, I mean, a lot of the cars geez. that were even here, that started here, have, have moved lot. over there anyway. A so lot. that's where they're showing Especially them. Sweden. Mm -hmm. Sweden, basically, when it comes to classic American cars, out of all the countries, without a doubt, number one. Yeah, uh, and they have a show called like Bill Sport Custom Motor Show, mm -hmm. and I started going there in 1995 for the first time. Mm -hmm. I've been there 18 or 19 times in 21 years. Mm -hmm. They love yeah. the big cars too. They like Cadillac. Yes, I mean, they do. anything big steel. That's Cadillac what crazy is king, for. especially in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. Lincoln is is nothing compared to Cadillac is king. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I think Cadillac is kind of doing well here too. I mean, you, when you see things, uh, oh. people like like Jerry Logan oh, and these geez. guys doing that. That car's phenomenal. They've, that, they've taken it to a, a, a different level. Yeah. That car, to me, 
it's got a little traditional look to it, but it's got a contemporary look. What I like about it, he went with the white wall tires, he went with a bigger type of custom wheel. Mm -hmm. He went with so much innovation on that car. To me, I call that the million dollar custom. Yeah. It's a phenomenal I, piece. It just, it hits all the things I want to see in a car. Ken Dig and, and his team did a phenomenal job on that yeah. car. That's one of the best customs out in America yeah, today. Yeah, I thought so too. And I, I love the way they display it up. Uh, yeah. Because when you see it up high, I think it helps you get a, a better line on the side of Be it. Because you can see the roof low and the thin high. And a silhouette, you're looking straight into it. Yeah. Instead of looking down on the Yeah, car. I like seeing it, how yeah. they, how they the set it up. And the car looks good on the ground, too. It's great. But, I'm sure it but is. that undercarriage. I want to see, yeah, that's my point. Because oh, that's my favorite shot is getting way down low and then looking up on the that, that inner fender. Oh, Boy, what man. a, what a, Jerry's got a beautiful, beautiful, yeah. the copper caddy. Yeah. And when, when I first we, saw that at SEMA show, I walked the show, there was probably about 10 or 12 real strong customs there. Mm -hmm. but when I gave my award at SEMA, I gave an award to him at SEMA, oh, yeah. an award of excellence, because so the, the car was so beyond. And Dave was there signing, Jerry was there when I went up there and presented. We had about a 10 minute break and pictures with the car, and talk, it was phenomenal. Speaking of, of uh, innovation, the Riddler with the JF, uh, JF Lanai. Yeah, from, from Canada. Wow, can you believe that? Have you looked that car oh, over yeah. and all the oh, stuff yeah. in it? Yeah. You know, it's been stretched, it's been shortened, it's been widened. I've never been... seen a Riviera like that. No. I was blown away. And that's a Riviera. I mean, I have one. Not that, that year, I have a 68 Riv, but there's so much innovation. Doesn't it have you scratching your head? It's got what? a sports car look with a, with an Indian. I mean, it's just, it's beyond. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and, it, and it runs. That car's a good, <laughs> strong runner. Very fast car. Yeah, that car really does it You've for me, You've done a great too. job. Yeah. And I can remember him years ago with his first car that he brought to the show. Mm -hmm. It was a Kaiser, a blue Kaiser. When I looked at that car, you could see the, the, the quality was there. Mm -hmm. He had great design. That was, he was basically the rising star. Yeah. First car he's really put in, Chip even said it 10 or 12 years ago when it came out. When he saw that car, he said, wow, this guy's a good builder. Since then, he's built quite a few cars. So he's he's up and up. Yeah. I think he's Canada's best. JF is Canada's best yeah. builder. And how about, how about the whole persona of this guy? Because it's like, I, he's, he's got the name, he's got the look, he's, he's got, got the, the personality. The hat, the hat, he used to wear the hat, now he has it. But when I first met him, he used to have that that safari type hat. For years he wore that. Just the last couple of years he got rid of it. Now I can see his hair, whatever, but yeah. he's got, he's got, I like his personality, I like his style. Yeah, he he, he looks to me like he's like that next, oh, yeah. one of the next things that oh, we're yeah. gonna see all of a sudden yeah. and it's like, yeah. kaboom. He's hey, a, did you see his kid too? He, he goes around with his yes, son all over the yes, place. It's yeah. like a little, I don't wanna say a mini me because I think he's a bigger me, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's gonna yeah. be the same. No, JF, he's a great guy, great builder. Like I said, he's Canada's best. Do you have, uh, when you see family like that, uh, do you have any kids that are interested in, in I, what it is? I have two boys, but they're both busy in other projects. One works with me somewhat, my younger one, the 28-year-old, Nick. And Gino is, is a hairstylist, very good hairstylist. He travels all around the world. I mean, from San Francisco to New travels York. Travels around doing hair? And you got to be good if you he travel does. around He goes to England. Hair. He learned it. He learned in England. He learned in New York. And he's, a t and he's, he's 30 years old. Gino, his name is. And he is, he likes cars. I bought him a Lexus when, when it was brand new, one of those IS 300s back in 2001. But he is so busy doing stuff that I, it's hard to control Gino and say, Gino, come to a show with me. I mean, when he was younger, yes, went to mostly all the shows. But when he started hitting about 12, 13 years old, once in a while, maybe once a year, he'll go to shows. Isn't that weird? Because you kind of feel like, you know, that your family members that you're raising, yeah would be picking up these things that we loved. Yeah. And it's a totally different era. Like I said, we were all in the model era and they're in the Nintendo era, whatever, you know, the things. And it's just, yeah. it's just such it's, a different it's deal. So with computers today, with these cell phones today, with, yeah. with there was so much going on that, uh, I mean, people, you, you could do so much off these computers. You could do yeah. anything. It's why I want to see more kids at shows because they need to have, they need to be those little kids like we were yeah. when you were walking around and you'd see things and your, your jaw would drop yeah. and, and it, we, we had that love. I mean, I remember that love from my earliest memories in life, looking at cars, just freaking yeah. out. It's like, that is so cool. I just, I remember when I was growing up, uh, customs were uh, were strong for a while. Then basically, back in the mid-60s, like from 1964 to 1976, customs died. And they died hard. For 11 or 12 years, that's when I was showing a lot. Late 60s and all through the 70s. I used to go to a show three or four customers show. That's why I was building new cars for a while. 
brand new Riviera is all chopped. And I mean, well, what did you do with that four cylinder 74 Mustang? Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they did. They took that whole era and the gas prices went up and they started making these. T- yeah. Yeah. I, I, can, I can still remember one of the big things I remember is going to Bill Hines' shop in, in Bell, Bellevue, I mean, Bell Gardens, California, near Long Beach. And his son Mike was there, and I was—I had a chopped Mercury that I had done with Rod Powell a few months earlier. And the how I bought that car is when I was watching the movie *American Graffiti*, and his son brought me to the movie. His son Mike Hines, and within a couple weeks later, I bought a Merc, <laughs> and I customized that Merc. So I had Rod Powell and Salinas do a lot of the work on it, the chopping, and then I had Bill Hines do all the lead work, the headlights, the taillights, the grill, the fadeaways. We put lifts on the car, hydraulic lifts. There was no airbags back in 1973. But I could still remember driving that car in white primer to the 1975 Grand Nash, Oakland Grand National Roaster Show, parking in the parking lot right in front of the ticket booth. And when I walked out after, there must have been two or 300 people around that car because back then they never saw many chop cars. And the movie that came out in 73, it showed the red one that was chopped. But remember, customs died, especially chopped Mercury's. They weren't doing Mercury's back in the late 60s or mid 60s. So when it came out, it was like the resurgence. It was this, and then Richard Zoki built the Cole 50 about a year after that. So when those cars really came out finished in like 1976, that started the Mercs again, and that started the custom. So from 1976 on, that's when it started going crazy again. One of the things I'm picking up through all this is that you've done so many cars, and you did them at an early age. You still got to have a job to be able to finance all this kind of stuff. What did you do for your living to be able to afford the parts and the well, things that you got to do? In my do? early I mean, years, I worked with my dad. He was a general contractor. He built hundreds of homes. So I worked at Tim for four or five years. Then I then I went to college after high school. I went to Phoenix, Arizona. It's called DeVry Institute of Technology. I stayed there for two years and graduated. Had a part-time job there. And then when I got out of there, I got I got a job in electronics. Only lasted a year and a half. Didn't like it. And then I, I just got out of that. And then I, of all things, I went to my Uncle Bill's liquor store. And me and his grandson actually took over the liquor store. And I stayed there for three or four years. And then I just didn't like that business, being selling right, liquor. Right, and it right. was just. And then I got into the cars a lot more. And then, and then basically, I got a good job at a steel industry, and I worked up to be in, in the management there. And I actually worked there till 2010, six years ago. I actually retired after 33 years there. So that created enough money flow to build a car. And then after I built a couple cars, and I sold one, and I kept getting that money and building. And now I got about six or seven cars done. And I every every few years I auction them off and go bring them to the Peterson it's, Museum and it, show them all over the world. For me, it's it's neat to hear something like that because it's like regular dude stuff. Yeah. I had yeah. jobs, I did this, right. I did that, and that's what a lot of us did. We went through our careers, and you're working the whole. I mean, you weren't just when you say that, and you and you yet have the depth that you have of experience with cars. It means that. You did your work job, exactly. and then you went home, and you did as you, many hours at home as you did at work that day to do all this I stuff. I look at it now, I don't even know, even people say, how did you build 100 plus cars, or, or own 100 plus cars and build them, when you're working a full-time job? And, and at that time in the steel industry, it's not just 40 hours sometimes. Sometimes I used to even, even go into the 80 hours, 90 hours a week. Mm-hmm. So how did, I mean, on the average, I bet you I put 60 hours a week in. Wow. If you do my whole career of all, I bet you 60 to 65 hours for 33 years. Oh, you answered it earlier, though. You said, I only get four hours of sleep. <laughs> you know, you know what? I'll tell wow. you, I'm a four to five hour sleeper. Oh, okay? man. And when I'm four to five hours, I feel like I am now. I'm, I'm full of fire. I could, I could go on and on and on. Once in a while, about once a month, I'll go eight to ten hours. And, and not that I'm sleeping. I'm just laying in bed thinking. I'm a thinker. I'm always thinking of the next project, the next show, the next interview, whatever. But... Sometimes if I get too much sleep, I just don't have no gas. I mean, I, I just can't function. Yeah. I just don't have the drive. Everybody, I think, can relate to that when you have your Saturday morning sleep in and you sleep longer than what you intended. Yeah. And it's like the whole rest of the day you're yeah. going, hey, you kind yeah, of Yeah, but you know what? Around. I'm in my best element. Good. I'm, at, I'm at a car show. I'm at the yeah. Portland show. Yeah. I mean, and this has been, like I said, a record-breaking year. And it seems like when I see people, little kids, older people, looking at cars, having fun, it just turns me on. Oh, when I'm at it. the booth signing autographs, little kids are there. Signs, let's take a picture. It just turned So just like yesterday, 18 hours yesterday. Went to bed, like I said, 4 o'clock in the morning after a couple hours with the computer. 
but all day I was on fire. I mean, nothing could stop me. Today so I feel the same way. You you are covering so much ground. Not I mean, not just Portland. Obviously, you are all over the place. How how do you compare this with? other shows as far as is this kind of a trend are all the shows improving I, I'm not saying comparing their shows to this one but are they all continuing to improve and evolve as they're going well, or, just, or is this very just, special now when you when I say shows I do so many world tours I do I do 15 to 20 European shows a year I do Australian shows South America Asia but when it comes to America I would definitely definitely put this show top five in America Wow. Without a doubt. Yeah. And I'm not going to say what's one, two, three, four, or five. Mm -hmm. It's in the top oh, five, yeah. okay? It's yeah. the best of the best. And this year proved that. I mean, every year is good here. Mm -hmm. But this year, with the with the cars that they had, with the with the celebrity appearances like Foose and Kindig and Winfield, I mean, it's been exceptional. But this show always ends up having super cars. The, yeah. the Northwest, mm -hmm. Seattle was great cars. But Portland, 60 years, yeah. they it's proven. Yeah. I mean, but... Uh, I would say, uh, you know, everything's improving. Uh, but the one thing is improving a lot is the quality. Yeah. You look at the quality of hot rods today, muscle cars, custom cars. It's just beyond. I mean, the, we got, people we, are learning though, right? Yeah, they know but we that got better. We got better equipment. Yeah. But and but there's a lot of people, a lot of celebrity people, a lot of people that can afford to get it into these cars, like the like the Kindig, like the you know Jerry Logan right. car, like the Foose car. I mean, I mean, it takes a lot of money to build a car like that. And we're not talking a hundred thousand. We're not talking two hundred thousand. We're talking half a million to a million plus in all these type of cars. Mm -hmm. Probably in this show here, there's probably. Probably one, two, three. I bet you there's uh, there's probably six or seven million dollar cars yeah, here. I, I believe at least. that. Yeah. And there's a lot of half a million dollar cars here. Yeah, and the interesting thing is, even when you say those half a million dollar cars, they're going to compete. That's what the problem is with the whole judging this yeah. is that those, it's not just the dollar amount. Any of those million dollar cars and the five hundred thousand dollar cars, they're Oh, Go yeah. judge and figure out which one. I I just feel like it's it's, it's just not easy. Impossible. Just just like me, I have to pick a car today, yeah. and and you know me, I'm going to pick a custom car, and I'm going to build a tradi I'm going to pick a traditional car. Mm -hmm. Even though I like contemporary customs with black walls with the big wheel, I usually don't go to that look. I go to that old school yeah. Barris Winfield, yeah. that type of look. It's going to be hard to pick a car. Mm -hmm. There's about 12 cars here that I've looked at that are in my criteria for my award. Now, how am I going to, you know, it's not easy. They're so close together. I mean, I can flip a coin. They can all win. I can, I can have 12 of the awards done, and I give them to every one of them. Yeah. But I have to pick one car. That's just a step above it, and I have the car picked. Yeah, it, it, that's good. That's yeah, good to hear. It. Because it, the weird thing that I was noticing is that there's all 12 of those cars on any of the Previous years that I've been around here would have been would have been a no brainer. Any one of those would have gone to that show and won that show, That's and they're right. all here at one show. That's yeah, the, yeah. the difference of yeah. this one. No, this show's great. There's the hot rods and the muscle cars. The custom. There's a lot of customs this year. If you really look at this show, all four buildings. Yeah. There's a lot of good customs here. Yeah. And there's yeah. a lot of good traditional customs. Like I said, I got 12 cars I looked at, but I narrowed it down to to two or three, and then I narrowed it down to the one. So uh, I think he's uh, the person who wins is going to be happy. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's a loser anyway. I mean, the, yeah. E even though only one no. wins the best one, I mean, no, it's, no, no. it's, it, to me, it, to it's, me, it's too the, good a comp. Every, the, they all know how good the, the competition is. It's the best of the best. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, John, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate having you. It's great been to, great sharing time with you. Great to be here. And neat to meet the queen. Oh, that she was out, great. Yeah, Penny that, Pichette, that she, was, great. she was great. I can't wait to actually, when this airs, to show the people around the world what's going on here, what we did at the Portland show. Oh, that's because cool. my next tour is Germany, I got Switzerland, I got British Columbia, I got Estonia. I got I got a lot of shows planned. That but sounds good. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be something nice to share to the world. That sounds great. Well so, thanks for doing it thanks, with us. Right. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks so much everybody. Thanks everybody. See you next time. Record breaking year. 60th Portland Roaster Show. See you next year.